Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file. We started up in a prior presentation. We also have open in an incognito window, the free sample company file. If you want the two open at the same time, we suggest using incognito window, which you can open if using Google Chrome by selecting three dots in the browser, new incognito window, typing into the search engine, QuickBooks Online test drive, looking for the result that has Intuit.com in the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks, the sample company being useful, allowing you to enter data into the sample company to test without having to put that into our test company file on the left-hand side. And it allows us to look at the differences between the accounting view, the one that our test company file is in, and the accounting view, the one that the sample company is in. If you wanna to be toggling back and forth between those two views, you could go to the cog up top and then switch the view down below. Now I'm also gonna be opening up a few tabs to put our financial statement reports in now that we have data in them. I generally do this every time I right click up top, duplicate the tab so that we can open one of the favorites and then I'm gonna right click on it again duplicate it again i would like to open up the balance sheet and the income statement back to the tab to the left reports on the left hand side and then i'm going to go to the balance sheet and then i'm going to put this from let's say 070125 to 123125 running it and then on the right hand side i'm going to go to the reports again this time the income statement or profit and loss report, close the hand boogie, change the range, 070125 to 123125. I would like to see this by month. So I'm gonna break it out by month and then run it. By the way, if you're in the business view, the reports are located in the business overview on the left-hand side and then uh, the reports on the left-hand side, balance sheet and the profit and loss reports located there. So last time we, we said that we have our project that we set up, we made an estimate for the $100,000 project, and then we basically sent out the prepayment that we, we used the process billing for at uh, the 10% or $10,000, even though we hadn't done any work at that point in time. So now we're gonna continue with this process and we're just gonna be billing as we scheduled, as we told the client that we're gonna be billing and we're gonna be recognizing the costs on the job as the costs of the job come up and we're not gonna worry about the revenue recognition kind of a, a disconnect type of thing between the two, although we'll point it out and then we'll, in a second, presentation we'll get into some more detail on what we might do to remedy that situation all right so let's go back on over we're gonna say okay I'm gonna go back to the first tab and we've been working within our projects over here so we set up our project number one let's go into project number one and then let's pretend that our first our, our second month uh, has happened so we're gonna say in month two, that's when the job actually uh, starts. And we're gonna say that, let's not highlight this side. We're gonna say that we have 13, uh, 18 in actual costs. So let's put those into the system. So we're gonna say, all right, normally that would be like an expense type of form that we would be paying for stuff. Usually we would have multiple expense forms that we would be paying to multiple vendors that would basically be grouped or categorized under our main buckets when we have a project or job of overhead materials and labor. But I'm just gonna kind of group it into one. I'm gonna make a generic vendor, that's who we're paying. And I'm gonna say that uh, the payment account, I don't have my cash account set up. So I'm gonna set up a cash account. So if you don't have a cash account here, I'm gonna say add account and this is gonna be a bank account and I'm gonna make it my checking account. So I'm just gonna call it checking and then I might just put like the last four digits of, a, of the checking account number or something like that if I had multiple accounts for internal accounting purposes, but I'll keep it at that. So I'm gonna then save it. So there's our payment account. I'm gonna put, say that this happened on the second month. So I'm gonna say 081525 uh, because we're working in 2025. I'm not gonna put a, a tag, I'll put project one on all of them to track the tags. 
and then I'm going to say that we could do it by category now and this would assign the expense to a category which if it was for a project you would expect it to be going to like a cost of goods sold category or a, a work in process kind of category but oftentimes we assign them by items because the items can can help us to assign things out help us to purchase things like the material and possibly allow us to pull the items over to an invoice if we're using that billable component so we've already set up the items i'm going to put in the generic items of materials now remember you normally you would have multiple kinds of materials you might be purchasing that would then be going to the account of you know materials as a general bucket of uh, expenses which would be a cost of goods sold type of account or something like that but i'm going to group it into the generic bucket of materials i'm just going to make three items that add up to that 13 amount so let's say that this was uh six thousand i'm not going to make it billable so i'm not going to make it billable this customer job would be there if we made it billable but i'm not going to this time we'll see that later i will assign a class to it allowing me to break out the income statement by class which is nice and then i'm going to say that we want labor this is another item that we set up which will be basically going to the cost of goods sold account for the labor i'll make this at four thousand i'm not going to make it billable therefore we don't need a customer or project we'll talk about that later this also going to job number one and then i'm going to say overhead which is the item we set up before the three main buckets and i'm going to say that this is going to be for the difference which is 3018 so 3018 not going to make it billable also going to job or class number one so the total adds up to the 1318 this is an expense form decreasing the checking account the other side being assigned by these items which are going to basically going to go to cost of goods sold so i'm going to say all right uh, let's save it and close it and check it out so now we have the costs assigned to our project in our in our project summary over here net profit so a, basically a little income statement within our project which is great for that individual project but i would also often like to see the projects kind of together or an income statement broken out kind of by project so i could then go up here and say let's look at my balance sheet i'm going to run it again notice if i i could hit the total here and run this by classes and it gives me a breakout of of the class over here but not all the balance sheet accounts will be broken out by class uh, right now we just have basically the net income that's being broke out by class so then if i go over here and then i say run this again so now we didn't recognize uh revenue but we have the expense which is now being uh happened the expense happened in august and we just assigned it to cost of goods sold because uh, these are going to be expenses for the job. Now, notice if you're doing a percentage of completion type of thing, or you might put the, traditionally you would put the costs into like work in process on the balance sheet and then, you know, expense them. But if we're doing a percentage of completion, we might basically expense them as they happen and then recognize kind of a percentage of the revenue. Also, you might break out the cost of goods sold through multiple categories of cost of goods sold cost of goods sold for labor cost of goods sold for overhead cost of goods sold for materials but we're just going to group everything into cost of goods sold uh here so there's going to be our our revenue that has been uh recognized